So no more debates? I... Every debate that I have seen play out either with myself as a participant or other people engaging in them, every debate that I've seen for at least two years now has been offensive to my intelligence and my moral worth as a person. They are actively humiliating to participate in, in, in the same way that I would feel like demeaned uh, if I, if I had to like sort of engage with another person argumentatively with you, like with baby talk, like it's, it is so removed from the way that I think and the way people should think that it's like an insult to be forced to participate in them. If you disagree with me on a number of subjects from a liberal perspective, I think that there is a reasonable disagreement that you can have. Theoretically, there are plenty of liberals who just act in the same sneering bad faith as any conservative, but it's possible with a conservative, if you meaningfully disagree with me from that perspective, you are uh, either dishonest to the point that you're not worth the time or subhumanly stupid. Like you, you, your brain has to be flawed to buy into these premises. You have to be weak. Now what you, what you want, you think is that it's good content and it is for some people, but I don't find it satisfying. There was a period of time during which the circumstances, the material conditions, et cetera, et cetera, whatever jargon you want to use, made it possible for debates to be like a medium of effective direct engagement. That's not a permanent thing, man. It doesn't have to be like that forever. Uh, we're, we're not like uh, mollusks clinging to a ship that's floating listless in a dead sea. We can do what we want. I'm free. I don't have to debase myself by talking to retards, repeating arguments that a first grader should understand for two hours straight, only to leave and for all of them to all go, yeah, we won that one, uh-huh, uh-huh, in a way that indicates they clearly didn't understand a word that I said. Complete waste of time. What would you say the more effective ways of moving people are? I mean, you're gonna hate it, but um, Hassan has been more effective in moving people over to the left than I have. And then Destiny has, if that's even a goal of his, it's not, but whatever. Uh, and that's because the most effective way to change people's minds is to be handsome and charismatic and play Among Us with, like, gamers. <laughs> that's it! The, the most effective way to move people over is through empathy, and in order for people to empathize with you and care about your position, you have to be likable. I like to think that I'm likable, and yet, in spite of this, many people dislike me. In my opinion, at the moment, debate is a nearly worthless medium for pulling people over, you might get fair weather people over, like much in the same way that there was a period of time during which I made a lot of arguments against woke scolds, and there were people on the right who would be like, yo, Vosh based for calling out the pink haired Twitter woke scolds, but they didn't actually get moved over to the left, right? They didn't actually have their mind changed, they just agreed with me on what they saw as a shared position. I think the debate conceptually is capable of changing people's minds. I just think that at the moment we're living in an era of such unreality that like, just imagine the mind of a conservative. What could I say to change that? It's crazy, genuinely crazy. You get people who are fixated on the content. You get people who are into the kayfab and the engagement and they like the clippable moments and they like the arguments and they like the epically owning people and so on and so on. But do you get people whose minds are changed? Maybe sometimes, but I think right now when arguing directly with the kind of people who, I don't know, unironically like, well, no one likes Dave Rubin anymore, I guess. Uh, 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 Michael Knowles or Matt Walsh or Candace Owens or whatever. To me, pro like engaging in this process is uh, fruitless and humiliating. I, I, I could not, I, I, in my mind, I still imagine this concept of a fruitful debate. I had a good debate recently on uh, Breaking Points, uh, hosted by Ryan Grimm, against that comedian, libertarian, whatever the fuck on Ukraine. I, and I think I laid out good positions. Am I going to change the mind of the average person who follows that guy's content? Well, that guy's like a, that guy's got like a fucking Putin's dick imprint, like the head of his cock printed in two inches back of the, through his throat. Like, I, I don't know if that guy's audience is amenable to differences in opinion. I have no idea. There's no way to do it in this environment of anti-truth. 
Yeah, unfortunately, we 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 kind of have to do the historical comparison thing here. I'm really sorry, guys. It's a little bit trite, but I'm going to pull it out. Nobody was doing any good winning debates with Nazis in 1933. You know, there was a point in time where some elements, some sections of society could be pulled. But past a point, a group gets so insular, so cult-like, that the odds of any individual can be convinced, by the way. I'm not literally giving up on the concept of changing people's minds. I just don't think debates are the way to do it. Like I said earlier, I think the best way to do it is just be charming, personable, uh, engaging, funny, pull people in that way, and then they just are more likely to warm up to your political views. Debate is a naturally confrontational medium of engagement, less likely to get people who already disagree with you to see something sympathetic. Not impossible, but more difficult, you know? Do you think maybe good moderators make for better debates? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Also, there are no. If they're a good moderator, a good moderator would never be accepted as a moderator by a fascist because a good moderator would fact check and the fascist would never get a word out. Good moderation would mean fact checking. If the moderator exists only to like be a chess timer to make sure both people talk the same length of time, who fucking cares? Why well, I don't want to be interrupted by some guy who's just like presiding over the debate to make sure everyone gets their four minutes. Two minutes uh, of 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 brain rot drool from a fascist is worth nothing. Every minute of my speech worth gold, solid gold, baby. Print that, print that on the paper. If he talks for two minutes, I should get to talk for the next one hundred eighteen. I don't, I don't, I don't care. The, you know, like uh, moderation is not the solution here. Every lie you lose one. Every every lie the chair that you're strapped to delivers an electric shock. The series talking with empathy one on one with the incel stuff was amazing. Help me. Yeah, historically, by the way, for the most part, over the past few years, my bumps in engagement, rare as they are, considering the fact that I'm maybe the most contemptuously hated person in all of the left leaning political space online. Uh, possibly you know there are there are, there's competition i feel like i've done a lot to earn my place thank you but in terms of getting like decent engagement within the past few years in the past the point in time where i feel debates have become less fruitful as a mode of engagement the biggest bursts of attention that i get tend to be from self-help and incel stuff you know because it, 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 these are uh, topics where I can um, relate to people's personal experiences and try to like, you know, in an empathetic, straightforward and helpful fashion, engage with insecurities or fears people might have. That wins people over in a way that I, I don't think debates do anymore.